Hello friends, this is Anjali Singh, welcoming you all to a small session over the concept of operon model. This model is a concept of a, a prokaryotic gene regulation which was uh, proposed by Francis Jacob and Jacques Monod from France in 1961. It was first described in E. coli and is defined as bacterial expression and regulation unit that includes uh, um, structural genes and control elements um, which is recognized by regulatory gene products. It falls under two categories, repressible and inducible, which undergoes uh, in both ways, positive as well as negative regulation. This uh, uh, slide depicts the positive and negative regulation of lac operon. In case of uh, negative re regulation, repressive binds to the operator and prevents the gene from being transcribed while in case of positive regulation, a transacting factor binds to the cis actin site in order to um, uh, in order to uh, um, increase in the affinity of RNA polymerase so that it binds to the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. When a set of genes is introduced, uh, sorry, induced to code an mRNA, it is known as inducible gene. In inducible regulation, the depressor is inactivated and dissociates from operator and upregulates the operon expression. While in repressible regulation, the depressor binds to the operator and downregulates the operon expression. In inducible regulation, um, the gene is regulated by the presence of its substrate, um, which is a, a lactose in the case, case of lac operon. And uh, in repressible regulation, the gene is regulated by its uh, enzyme pathways, the co-repressor, which is tryptophan in the case of tryptophan operon. Now the question arises, why gene regulation is important? What is the significance of gene regulation and why operon model is required to understand its uh, uh, importance? So the answer to this question is because gene regulation ensures that the appropriate genes are expressed at the proper time. This helps the um, organism to adapt itself according to the changes which are occurring uh, in the environment of the cell internally as well as externally. It also helps the cells to send uh, uh, feedback um, so that to, uh, whether this particular enzyme or protein is required to be transcribed or translate or not. It also helps the bacteria to favor the natural selection process for its very survival. Um, now moving to the lactose operon. So uh, it is an inducible operon. And why it is inducible? Because it is usually off. In the absence of inducer, the operator is blocked by the repressor molecule. It helps in mediating catabolic process and in this scenario, it helps in degradation of milk protein lactose. It can perform uh, uh, you know, both the positive and regulatory control. In negative control involves turning of the operon in the uh, presence of repressor as we have discussed earlier. And it can be either repressible or inducible. Like I mentioned in earlier slide, that operon is made up of um, um, what uh, control elements, and uh, uh, so uh, it uh, consists of a promoter, which is a uh, yeah, promoter, which is uh, minus ten to minus thirty five um, region of upstream region, of, which is upstream region of the operator mi minus ten to minus thirty five. And three, and it can also contains three genes: lac Z, lac Y, lac A, where lac Z encodes for beta galactosidase that helps in lactose break, uh, breakdown into glucose and galactose. Lac Y encodes for lactose permease, which is an ATP-dependent transmembrane protein, and helps in the translocation of lactose from outside to inside the cell. Lac A encodes for thiogalactosidase transacetylase that helps in the detoxification of thiogalactoside by acetyl coenzyme 
expression of the lac operon is controlled by the regulatory gene lac i uh, which is here um, which is uh, located just immediately adjacent to the promoter region as you can see here it encodes an allosteric repressor protein that keeps the operon off by the by binding to the operator and blocking rna uh, rna polymerase to the promoter moving on to the next slide we will discuss here how lacoperon is regulated in presence and absence of glucose or lactose see when the concentration of glucose is uh, very high in the cell the uh, concentration of cmp cyclic amine uh, adenosine monophosphate will be either very low or absent so it does not allow cap to bind to the promoter so transcription will not be occur and the operon is so uh, termed as switched off when the glucose concentration of glucose is gone to very low level the cmp binds with the cap protein which is known as catabolic uh, yeah okay it which is known as catabolic activator protein and also known as cmp at a uh, receptor protein crp so cmp binds with the so in case of uh, low glucose level cmp binds with cap uh, protein and forms the complex that binds to the promoter region uh, so that rna polymerase bind to the operator and uh, and uh, sorry rna polymerase binds to the promoter region and helps the transcription of the structural gene see when um, the concentration of glucose is low in the cell <coughs> and cmp binds with the uh, forms the complex with cap which helps in which binds to the promoter if repressor is present at that very moment transcription will not occur whether glucose is absent they will have cmp cap complex that doesn't matter um unless an anti repressor comes out from the picture now uh, in this uh, fig figure a represents repressible regulation in absence of inducer uh, yes in absence of inducer when there is no inducer in the environment such as uh, allolactose or iptg the lac i gene is transcribed and resulting repressor protein binds to the um Oh, yeah binds to the operator operator side of the lac operon and prevents transcription of the structural genes lac z lac y and lac a b represents the inducible regulation where inducer is present in the vicinity it binds to the repressor that causes conformational change of the repressor and in reduces its affinity for the operator and gets detached which allows uh, rna polymerase to bind and to begin transcribing the structural genes they are transcribed to yield a single polycystronic mrna which in turn translated to produce all the three enzymes uh, in case when glucose concentration is low in the cell in this case when glucose concentration is low in the cell um cmp forms the complex with cap protein helps in the binding of uh, uh, rna polymerase which helps in which in turn helps in the transcribing all these structural genes and hence we can say this lac operon is on as there is high high expression of the structural genes in this case got uh, reverse where when you uh, the concentration of glucose is uh, high whereas uh, lactose is very low because uh, glucose will not allow cap to uh, to form complex with uh, uh, sorry in uh, in case of high glucose uh, um, concentration glucose will not allow cmp to form complex with cap <coughs> so the expression of there will be no binding of transcript uh, rna polymerase there will be no transcription there will be no expression of any genes 
and when there is presence of both glucose and uh, lactose again the glucose will not allow cmp to form complex with uh, uh, cap protein the expression will of the structural genes will be very very low you can say they will show leaky expression uh, we must understand friends that uh, the actual inducer of uh, lactoferrol is allolactose which is an isomer of lactose while lactose is an apparent inducer iptg way uh, or isopropyl uh, sorry i forgot adding l here so i beg my pardon i beg your pardon sorry so it is a isopropyl thiogalactoside uh, which is a gratuitous inducer that it does not require any transport for its uh, uh, movement inside outside the cell it do not requires to convert it from inside and outside the cell it binds with repressor to inactivate it moving on further we'll discuss the effect of glucose on switching on and off of the lactoferrin genes in presence of glucose and lactose inside the bacterial cell bacteria preferably uses glucose as carbon source and not the lactose and hence turn off the operon even there is presence of lactose this indicates that glucose represses the effect of lactose see uh, i have already discussed with you that what happens in the cell when glucose concentration is high and when glucose concentration is low what the effect of what is the effect on the operon when there is presence of both glucose and lactose or when there is either glucose or lactose or when there is no glucose no lactose so this is just uh, i have made this slide just to give you a um, pictorial information of what i have discussed earlier about glucose gal- glucose lactose cmp concentration discuss uh, in this section relation of lac operon in case of various mutants in case of wild type when glucose sorry when lactose is present operon will be switched on or vice versa in case of i minus mutant where uh, lactose is uh, sorry where there is no functional repressor operon will be constitutively expressed irrespective of the presence or absence of lactose and the mutant is constitutive or recessive in case of is mutants where uh, um allolactose binding site is uh, absent or compromised operon will be switched off irrespective of the presence or absence of lactose and the mutant type is uninducible or dominant in case of osi um um what ha huh? yeah in case of osi mutants uh, uh the mutant of op, uh, operator is yeah what i was saying that okay then in case of osi mutants sorry guys in case of osi mutants the mutant operator is present operates operon is constitutively expressed and same is the case with id mutants where repressor lost the affinity for the operator and hence the mutant type is constitutive and dominant here in this slide do we have shown the action of mutant operation mutant operon the upper one is showing that operon if operator is normal repressor will bind to it and the transcription of genes will be blocked while if of if operator is mutant the repressor will lost its affinity for operator and the genes will be transcribed uh, constitutively you can say and where the lower one is depicting that the uh, the other form of uh, uh, mutant for operator <coughs> where there is no effect of repressor binding to the operator and the genes will be expressed constitutively the table is showing some common mutants i have discussed these things earlier in our previous slide 
first one is wild type so when lactose is not present no beta galactosidase when low lactose is present there will be beta galactosidase and second one is showing showing like a lack i mutant and is re recessive so wild type phenotype will be shown and the last one is oc mutant and is dominant so the transcription will be genes transcription of the genes will be constitutively active moving further we will discuss diopsic growth in bacteria what is it who it was described by monod and it is uh, called as biphasic or diopsic growth and we often observe when microbes are going in a chemical uh, in a chemically defined medium where there is two sugars glucose and galactose uh, sorry glucose and lactose typically the two growth stages uh, yeah if di dioxo growth they have two stage uh, two growth stage stages so these two growth stages are separated by an uh okay say arrested phase known as lag phase shown in this slide you can see this here dioxy growth has traditionally been interpreted as an adaptation that allows the maximization of growth in dual nutrient uh, environment they found that switching to the secondary carbon source starts even before primary nutrient is exhausted which is called as preparation preparation phase and that de determine determines the duration of the uh, lag phase means if uh, if the uh, bacterial cell takes uh, more time to for its preparation from jumping from uh, glucose to lactose lag phase lag phase will be lengthy and if uh, preparation phase is well is a short period of time so will be the lag phase it uh, the uh, we have uh, it is defined the the slide defines the what is diagnostic it is the switch from rapid fermentative growth in the presence of rich carbon source which is glucose to the slower exponential growth by aerobic respiration using ethanol once the preferred carbon source is exhausted so this curve is showing that uh, cell is using uh, glucose at this carbon um, source when glucose is start depleting not completely exhausted but is starting depleting cell will start its preparatory phase so that it can switch to uh, lactose and in this this preparatory phase is is it's uh, it prepared itself and hence there will be a short period of lag time short period of halt known as lag phase and again the uh, cell will start using um, lactose as its carbon source discuss tryptophan in our uh, upcoming slides i know that you must be feeling bit lazy or so if you want to take a break you can take a break or we can take a break after few minutes we, uh, you can uh, uh, again join the presentation so you can understand the concept of tryptophan operon so moving on further we will okay we will discuss uh, the structure of mm, tryptophan operon this operon encodes five enzyme in the biosynthesis pathway leading to synthesis of tryptophan and these genes are edcba apart from promoter and operator which we have uh, seen in which was only the case uh, in uh, lactose operon tryptophan operon also have a small or or a sh short sequence a stretch of leader sequence trpl adjacent to the operator it is required for the attenuation which we will discuss in uh, upcoming slides so don't get confused with this you must be seeing the this these things attenuator attenuation i'll discuss it in for the slide trp repressor is actually an apo repressor but you are which you are what you are saying seeing here is an um, apo repressor meaning it has a necessary cofactor 
which will be uh, which will be played by the trp trp repressor do not bind to the operator un- uh, when there is low com- uh, concentration of tryptophan this allows the transcription of the structural gene for tra- uh, for the tra- um, synthesis of tryptophan in case when the concentration of tryptophan is high it binds with the repressor and the complex bind to the operator represent tryptophan operon so it is a repressible operon uh, and performs only negative regulation in the bind in negative regulation the binding of the regulatory protein is re- in the regulatory region decreases the transcription of genes lac repressor and trp repressor both are negative regulators please friends pay attention what i am saying here that that lac repressor and trp repressor both are negative regulators okay agree with me but when repressor is no longer bound to operator in case of lac to operon lactose bind to the operator while in case of tryptophan operon tryptophan do not bind to the operator unless and until it forms the complex with repressor this difference is so because lac operon helps in the catabolism that is burning of lactose while tryptophan helps in the biosynthesis of tryptophan it has uh, following components promoter operator option number 3 to 23 the five structural genes i have already shown it and which helps in the conversion of uh, corresponding to tryptophan this table shows that what is the effect of um, repression and attenuation on the regulation of trans, uh, tryptophan operon so well in this slide we'll discuss that uh, how actually tryptophan is regulated e coli requires amino acid for its survival and tryptophan is one of that that e coli can ingest from environment tryptophan is synthesized using enzyme that are encoded by five genes if, if tryptophan is present in the environment e coli do not need to synthesize it however when tryptophan is low or absent in the environment the tryptophan operon is switched on and transcription initiate initiated the genes are expressed and transcript tryptophan is synthesized if tryptophan is plentiful two trp molecule tryptophan molecule sorry two tryptophan molecule binds to the repressor protein at the operator this blocks the rna polymerase from transcribing the tryptophan genes when tryptophan is absent the okay when tryptophan is absent the repressor do not binds to the operator and genes are transcribed this regulator this regulation is mediated through a stem loop formation known as attenuation which will be described in our next slide so a stem loop structure also called as leader attenuator because i have already shown you that uh, leader sequence helps in the attenuation so known as leader attenuator region uh yeah which helps in regulation of tryptophan operon it terminates the transcription at the site before first structural gene the attenuation is based on the ability of rna to form alternative structure through intramolecular base pairing like in this case in the here here they are all the example of intramolecular base pairing okay attenuation requires the uh, close linking between transcription and translation a uh, leader sequence which i have told you that plays in attenuation uh, it plays a very important role uh, in the process of attenuation as it contains nucleotide that transcribe in four regions this one one two three four which determines whether the transcript operon will be switched on or switched off so in case of high tryptophan concentration ribosome reads uh, through the tryptophan adding amino acid to the protein chain 
and preventing the uh, the two and three loop this one to bind hence three will bind with the uh, uh, three will base pair with the fourth one forming the loop that terminates transcription even before transcription level is high enough to activate the repressor and transcription will be terminated with the attenuator region while when the transcription level is low ribosome reached to the double trip, uh, tryptophan codon they are slow to add in the ribosome so translation stalls in uh, this region in the first region only it will stops here so 2 and 3 uh, yes so it will bind it is uh, stalling in the first region ribosome ribosome is uh, slowly adding to the adding to it and is stalling in the one region and allowing hence allowing two and three to form intramolecular base pairs hence it will the this loop will destabilize transcription transcription uh, 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 sorry hence this uh, uh, this loop will does not destabilize transcription and hence it continues to form the mrna and translation will be continued so the genes will be on for the tryptophan synthesis ribosomes what are they okay ribosomes are only present in prokaryotes they are regulatory mrna sequence located um at the 5 prime utr region that controls the gene expression via rna ligand interaction they are ubiquitous in bacteria including some pathogen it is a secondary structure have two domains um aptamer that helps in the yes so it has two domain aptamer uh, which is a ligand ligand binding site uh, that recognize uh, yeah this, this recognizes the binding of uh, this recognizes the site site where ligand actually binds and the second domain is a expression platform that couples a ligand binding to a change in gene expression ribosome switches uh, regulate the initiation of protein translation here you can say uh, you can see uh, how uh, aptamers uh, yeah sorry how ribosome switches are helping in the translation and transcription uh, co transcription ligand binds kinetically to the um, kinetically that traps the rna in conformation that supposed supports the efficient transcription this is uh, this is um, tryptophan rna binding attenuated protein helps in the attenuation does a stalling this stalling or determining uh, to the switching on and off of the Uh, tryptophan operon it is a multimeric inactive protein it regulates the tryptophan operon by a novel attenuation mechanism i have discussed earlier in the absence of tryptophan trap will not bind to the mrna sequence a secondary structure uh, um, yeah will not to the bind to the mrna sequence the thus the secondary structure will form will be known as anti termination stem loop which will not transcribe tr terminate the translation hence the tryptophan will operon will be switched on while in the presence of tryptophan trap will bind to the mrna sequence finding the secondary structure which is uh, intramolecular uh, base pairing between third and fourth the a forming termination stem loop which will terminate the translation of tryptophan hence the tryptophan operon will be switched off and with this friends i am coming to the end um, i have came to end of my presentation hope you enjoyed the video keep it up